this yeah. and the video is fine. That's perfect. Okay. Yes. Yeah, I, I think I'm sharing. Okay. Good. So, well, today we have one of our uh, guest speakers from for the summer. This is Professor Mauricio Rodriguez. Uh, let me read a little bit. So he obtained his master's and PhD in electronics engineering from Universidad Técnica Federico Santa Maria in Valparaiso. That's Chile, yes. 2011 and 2017. Now, since actually almost 2016, he has been a faculty within the Escuela de Ingeniería Eléctrica at Pontificia Universidad Católica de Valparaiso, so same city, different university yeah. in Chile. And I met well, we feel over a year ago in the context of how we know that the thing is lecture from Thompson. So we had happened to do that. Also, there was a conference table and then we met in Uh He's working on some very interesting things. We'll say, oh, what's going on in Chile? Well, you'll see what's going on in Chile. And today we're going to be learning about a topic that is relevant for many of you, which is channel modeling. But in this case, as statistically reliable channel modeling, as of course, at frequencies in which reliability would come in very handy, which is millimeter waves. So with this, as always, these are informal seminars. So uh, I feel thank you first for being willing to join us here and, and to stay. And for everyone to join, feel free to ask at any time or you know, we'll take it from here. There is pizza, there are drinks, and only the knowledge is the limit. So thank you, Mauricio. The floor and the screen for those who are on Zoom is yours. Okay, thank you, Joseph. Thank you, everyone, for staying here. Uh, it's my first time here in Boston. Uh, uh, usually, or current, uh, it's not common to me speaking English you know, or make a, a class in English. In Chile, all the people speak it in Spanish. Uh, uh, but I will try to be the best in, the, in this uh, seminar. Okay, my name is Mauricio Rodriguez. The, the name is this is the name of my project in Chile. Uh, maybe it's not so huge, but it's a main research fund for my in my country. Uh, I associate professor in Chile has a different name. It's, it's a associate professor uh, and a director of the master and PhD program in the, my school too. Um, I am researcher to another. Uh, it's in a research center. It's uh, the name you can see on the right on the bottom and CCD Bell a research center. center. Uh, for this reason, I have two affiliations. Okay. Uh, first, where is Chile? Uh, maybe you don't know, but it's in the uh, I can. Chile is in the south of America. It's uh, Argentina is uh, my neighborhood. Yeah, uh, it's Valparaiso is all the it's like a state. Yeah, it's very big for us, for, for me in Chile. But we are only a little part. We are very near on the ocean. I don't know if I can mark here. No, I can show here. Uh, two here. Uh, yes, yeah, here is Valparaiso. <laughs> in this no. point, it's, it's, it's in the, in the we had the ocean in my my city. Uh, it's all, all for you know where is Chile. Uh, uh, Valparaiso is a UNESCO heritage. It's a, it's a very old for us. Um, it's very uh, unusual in my country. This kind of views have a lot of hills and all this house. So see the, the ocean, yeah. it's very different. We have a lot of buildings, they are, are old buildings, but we, we are uh, building new, uh, we are creating new buildings yeah, for all the university. And this is on the top here, uh, like here, yeah, but not so big. Yeah. And here there's a center, research center, where, where, where I work too. Uh, with a beautiful view of the ocean all the time. Uh, the research center have a lot of uh, other uh, alliances, uh, collaborators in all the world. Here's my collaboration with Nokia Bell Labs. I can show you more late about 
this collaboration. I have uh, 10 years ago. Uh, this is a, a little picture for introduce uh, what I do. Always I thinking about cell, cell, cell phone system, cellular systems for give connection to the people. In the middle of the figure, you can see a tower uh, connecting the, the, the people. Only change in the figure, uh, the frequency. Yeah, and this tower with these characteristics is only for two GHz, but it's not prepared, prepared for 20 GHz for this reason. Uh, a lot of uh, brown connection you can see uh, in this figure when the guy is, is, is blocked for the, for the hills or for a building. Okay, so for introductions, uh, this, uh, you know, the, the actual system, the standard antennas illuminates uh, all the users. Each uh, color is a different frequency. I always I use this, of course, like you. You have a bandwidth signal to not radio to obtain the capacity of the channel, of course. Uh, EA, I concentrated in the signal to noise radio for the cover tour of the system. For this reason, uh, I create or I made a, a channel models uh, for different frequencies. Uh, uh, one option is uh, for new frequencies, small cells. Okay, for this reason, uh, here you have uh, uh, relays, but the channel condition change when you have you have different altitude of the new base station, for example, and this in the city is not all, uh, over the clutter; it's down the clutter. For this reason, the propagation of the the, the waves uh, are different with different attenuations, uh, dispersion of the channel. Uh, for this reason, now the last year we may do different uh, channel models uh, under uh, different conditions. Uh, of course, you know, uh, other options is change to standard antenna to be informing, illuminates each user uh, using different frequency, like the figure on the front introduction. Uh, why we need that for compensate the difference of an attenuation. This, uh, of course, free, free space, 2.4 GHz and 28 GHz. You have 20 dB of difference. Of course, you need uh, directive antenna to compensate this pa new pallos, increase in the pallos. Uh, to example, you have a lot of this antenna here in the lab. 28 GHz, you can obtain 24 dB AI for compensate this difference or for the sub terahertz or no, 170 GHz, you can obtain up to what, 26 dB AI with a bandwidth one, one uh, rate. Uh, sometimes we think we can, we need to illuminate uh, each user like searching his position and changing the, 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 the angle that you are using for illuminate the, the user, that is only true on some distance, not all the distance, uh, 100 or, or more distance is not necessary. Uh, don't change so much the, the propagation. That is uh, all an uh, introduction to the channel modeling. Uh, here you have the, the first figure, the pallos. Uh, always I separate only uh, between the large scale effect and the small scale effect. Uh, I know if you can see very good the, the figures, the, the, this line have the large scale uh, pallos. And the more clear uh, line you have here, the parallel, uh, the large scale and the smallest scale included. The, this figure uh, have the same information. Uh, you can see here it's a average of the all the signal, but this is uh, the large scale. You can see the fluctuation of the signal uh, that include the smallest uh, 
this is, this is a small scale. How you obtain this variation is for a, a constructive or destructive of the signals. It's very easy when you have only two signals. If you are destructive, uh, you can obtain minus infinite uh, dB power, of course. Uh, it's a lot of fluctuation. And I can show you, you we can model this fluctuation, for example, on a rise distribution uh, with a K factor. Uh, but it's very simple, all this information. You can modulate this fluctuation, uh, moving the, the user in different position, or you can change the frequency. Yeah, for, you have the frequency, the, the, pot, the power versus frequency, uh, or you can rotate the directive antenna for make the average eliminate the small scale. Yeah. Uh, it's a pure. I don't know if you want maybe questions. It's, it's okay, uh, but I think it's very basic. That yeah, here is the two ray model. You can see here the fluctuation. You can obtain up to one hundred dB of difference of power, including the small scale, of course. Yeah, you can change the the break point only changing the altitude of the antenna. This is a very simple model, but you can obtain, of course, a, very, a lot of rays and obtain a more complex uh, system models with the ray tracing. Uh, here's for street canyons, the second example of for indoor corridors. Uh, I use a lot of this kind, for example. Uh, only for example, this uh, one of my papers. Here we uh, made a log normal model. I think you know it. Uh, we always use narrow band system uh, because with this system we can obtain more in budget, more distance, more representative for real conditions uh, for a user and, and real system. And, and this experiment, uh, you can see here, we move the omni antenna and a lot of positions to obtain the large and plus the small scale. Uh, and we rotate, um, make the average, we eliminate the small scale, you obtain only this large scale. It's very similar to make the, the average in white box. Uh, but you eliminate the, the small scale. Yeah. Here you can obtain the small scale and large, large scale. Uh, this is uh, the graphic for uh, outdoor cases and only change the altitude uh, or the height of the antenna, the base station, in this case, emulator the base station, of course, uh, to one point meter to 0 0.3 meters. And we can see the two ray model and the measurement are very similar to the two ray model. Uh, here you have the 2.4 meter. You can see the, the bright bulb point. Call for the altitude. We can obtain the, the two parameters of the log normal model yeah? and the dispersion of the model two. Of course, when you uh, reduce uh, the altitude, you obtain uh, more dispersion. More, uh, it's, it's more for the breakpoint, huh? this effect. For the lot condition, we create model for outdoor to indoor. We can see here you have more dispersion in this case, uh, and the fewer, and the same if you can change the altitude. If we can uh, modulate this, it's are very simple, this model, uh, thinking and um, where people can use it for, uh, for this link connection, wireless connection. Uh, double case is this one, it's our to indoor two, but with, uh, with, without line of sight, of course, you include more dispersion, you can obtain six dB of dispersion in this case, uh, it's, it's very common for this kind of scenarios. We uh, 
not in this paper, not only make create more uh, log normal models, we always quantify how much you lose when you uh, reduce the output of the base station. I think in some cases you don't have cable uh, or uh, you can put the base station at high altitude uh, for aesthetic uh, problems. Uh, and we quantify the, the variation of the small scale to with the K factor, uh, how it changed with the altitude uh, for quantify the uh, other problems. Uh, the small scale is very common for me, model A with a, a recent rise distribution or recent distribution with a K factor. Uh, uh, I like this model because it has uh, physics representation. Uh, you have that diffuse power or scattered path, and you have a dominant path. Uh, and the, the relationship between the dominant path or the power of the dominant path and the diffuse power is the K factor. If with this number, the K factor, you can obtain how much uh, is the fade or the fading of the channel in this position, of course. If you don't have a dominant path, of course, you have a rally distribution. Of course, this is a very simple model. If you can make or do a more complex model, including more dominant path, two wave diffuse power or two ray diffuse power, etc. Uh, but and then for the moment, in the most of the cases with two rays for an omni antenna is enough. Uh, but now we are uh, looking the effect of the this kind of channels with the race distribution or a two wave race uh, two wave Ray distribution to uh, no, distribution power uh, with the direct, directive antennas. Uh, I have two or three papers speaking about that, uh, about the effect of the gain will you obtain with a uh, directive antenna uh, with this kind of channels with one or two dominant parts. Uh, why you why we need that? Uh, uh, you cannot. Ah, oh, sorry, this is only the, the statistic. This is the CDF and this is the PDF. You can see how it changed. This is not normal set for the mean power, but you can see the uh, how changed the CDF when you obtain more dominant path. Uh, you obtain uh, less fades. More K factor, less fade. Less. But you can uh, quantify different other uh, parameters, the average fade duration, level pulse rate, uh, current distance, time, current, current time, etc. With the K factor or other similar distribution uh, of the power. Uh, and you can, of course, with this kind of uh, Distribution of the diversity using omni antenna that we like combinate uh, direct antenna beam forming, but not only in one position. If uh, uh, in our case, is a lot of beam forming in different position uh, to see if we can obtain more gain uh, making the mix. Do you understand me? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, what? what um, I'm sorry. Yes. And it's a number of branch. The branches or the positions or the how many antennas do you have in the system? Oh, okay. Good question. Uh, selection combiner, equal gain combiner, uh, maximum rate combiner. And then you will uh, see the, the CDF. You can see the difference of the diversity gain that you can obtain between the node diversity and the MRC. Uh, that is all. The green is selective combiner. When you have a system, yeah, if you have two antennas, you can you can uh, select the, the antenna, you have the maximum power. 
Now, the MRC, you, uh, you, may, you can make the sum of two antennas. Yeah, if for that, you must uh, change the face of the, the signal um, and make the sum. Yeah, uh, okay. And equal gain combiner is an average of the two antennas, simple. And this is a, uh, you sum the power of the both antennas. And the electric combiner, you select one of two. Uh, you have here how much? You have eight. You can uh, select a, one of eight antennas or MRC, you sum the A antennas. Yeah. Then you can think now each antenna here is not only, uh, you can use direct, uh, a direct antenna or make a big forming in the position of each antenna. You obtain the gain mixing the MRC and the, the gain of the antenna pointing this in the best direction. Yeah. Good. More questions at this point? Or it's so fast? I speak faster, no? Oh, well, that's good. Oh, okay. Uh, if you don't have a question, I now start with uh, what I do with this information. It's so simple. The all the mathematics and the the thing with I do, what I do. Uh, this is my one of my teams. I work in uh, I don't know ten years with Ronaldo, Dimitri. In, I think four years with Jim Fendu from Nokia Bell Labs in New Jersey, and the last three years with Gil Sussman and Columbia University with his student. And I work with uh, Rodolfo and CC Bal here. Uh, Rodolfo uh, was my PhD advisor with uh, Reinaldo and Dimitri too. Uh, we are continuing with our collaboration. Uh, this is one of our equipment. Let me see if we can put the video. It's a, this is the receiver. You can see here the direct antenna is rotating 360 degrees. Uh, with a uh, velocity of 300 RPM. Uh, we start thinking 300 RPM is enough to, to obtain the variation of the channel with people, but it's not enough. We need almost 3000 RPM to obtain the velocity for obtain the variation of the channel almost for people working. But we saw we don't, you don't need all the direction. Uh, you can obtain two dominant paths, but the second path is not necessary in the most of the cases. Only you need the, the, the main direction for the connection. Uh, and the time you need for change of this position is so fast. Maybe it's difficult to make the change of direction uh, before me. Yeah. Um, the second option, you have 3, 30, 40 dB uh, of energy less. Yeah. Uh, it's very simple, this equipment. It's a portable. Uh, it's uh, more heavy than a computer. Uh, all the system, uh, you can obtain the angle, the time, and the power. Only the power, not the phase. It's narrow band. Channels, but I can uh, use it for put the system and crazy parts uh, over the car. For, I don't know three meter, four meters. I know it's not so good the picture, but if we put here up the system or and this crazy position maybe here is not. Well, my country. I can do it that too, but nobody knows. Uh, we create two equipment. This, this, this one. We made two equipment. One is in Chile, my country. I am a lab, and the other one is here in New York uh, with Gil Sussman and Nokia Bell Labs. Then we made measurements in Chile. Uh, we made measurements in Manhattan, in different position. 
uh, here you can see are now so good the receiver uh, here is the transmitter uh, this this little here is the power meter it's a pen drive huh? it's the side of the power meter uh, and you can obtain the first version 700 uh, samples for minutes but now we are in 10,000 samples per minute because we want to see the variation of the power uh, in one position of the directive antenna for see the fluctuation of the cars, uh, people, whatever things. Yes. Uh, yeah. No, no, the, the car, the, the, whatever you want. <laughs> but depending on uh, the scenario when you can make the measurement. Uh, uh, in this case, the, our first measurement only is for move, for emulate different base station position. Then it's so, so, uh, uh, not so much the velocity. We'll change, we'll get the car, create new measurement, and move the, the car again. But uh, how I tell you I, uh, after, uh, no, before, uh, sorry. Uh, so it's more fast the channel. And then if I drive, I can see all the variation of the channel. Yeah. So fast, a millimeter way. You change one millimeter, change the channel mm -hmm. a lot with, with millimeter. Mm -hmm. Again, sorry, I can hear you also fast for me. Big for me? Good question. Uh, it's mechanic. For this reason, it's rotating. It's like a beam forming. It's like it's more like a beam switching. For this reason, the antenna is rotating. Rotating. It's very similar with the beam switching. Uh, some people make uh, do antennas. You change what parameter, it change all the pattern in one other direction. It's very similar, but uh, not the same. But it's fast, it more it's much more cheap too for us. Okay. Yeah, I know your equipment is more, uh, not so cheap. Yeah. So just on the ground, uh, so you have a single antenna. Single, uh, actually the, we have two antennas in this system, but only one directive antenna. The other one, maybe you can see this one is here. It's an omni antenna. Yeah. It's an omni antenna. We have, then we can compare it, the, uh, the variation of the omni antenna and how much power change or the pattern change with the directive antenna. It's only one antenna, directive antenna, and one directive antenna, and one omni antenna. Yeah. yeah. It will came we can make make the comparison. Um, some places we can make measurement without the antenna for for signal to noise range. Yeah. That's good because you know the current results from the state and say, yeah, we need a very very good thing. Yeah, yeah, I have it's just the only direction that you can see it. But we emulate and informing our beam switching system. Well the rotation of the antenna. Yeah. 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 Okay. And then, okay. 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 Yeah. If you have a narrow antenna, you need more resolution. Yeah. yeah. Okay. For the statistic, yeah. Of okay. course. Question? So when you have your direct antenna, the 
and it makes sense to go for this if you have a receipt for it. That is directive where it's pointing backwards or um, a new look of the current space to be transmitted. Ah, you have a receipt signal. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, I can show you other patterns uh, in indoor, outdoor. Yeah, you have a lot of the reflections uh, in all the yeah. streets. But uh, the idea is you can choose which, which is the best uh, position. And sometimes you are, it's not the line sight uh, direction. But then how do you know, considering the antenna pattern of the receiver antenna, if the base is on the, the maximum gain direction or if it's just about multi bus component? So let me rephrase the question. How do you know that? When the horn is not pointing to the transmitter, that what you receive, is, you have all the information in, uh, in 360 grades. You know, you don't fix the antenna, the antenna, you rotate in the antenna. Yeah, so when you are rotated, you get some strength, strong component. How do you know that it's uh, reflected multiple the bump on the moment? No, no, it's, it's the convolution between the uh, pattern. The uh, direct antenna pattern and the channel. You, you obtain the convolution between the pattern of antenna and the channel. No, you don't know. Yeah, you, don't know. Right. You, you only can assume some uh, model with one, two, or more rays and look if it's very similar or obtain the, the same results. For this reason, we simulate a lot of times uh, this kind of, uh, this one, this kind of uh, channels to see if we obtain this, uh, the same result or similar results. Okay. Yeah. When one ray or two rays or more rays, we need it to expl expl explicate uh, our results. We understand whether we are seeing. Yeah. We have two switches in the receiver. This. With a computer, you can set the, the game. But only for uh, when you are rotating, you can change the game. You stop, change the uh, the game for you. You must be sure it's, uh, have the, the enough signal to noise ratio uh, in the system, and you will start rotating the the equipment. Okay. Uh, and we have you can change to the the duration of the transmitter too. No. No, for the moment. Okay, so good. Good questions. Thank you. Uh, well, we made a lot of measurements, uh, crazy parts. And uh, for example, this is one of the, our last paper uh, with Columbia University in Nokia. We made measurements. Uh, we put the uh, uh, base station at this point, if we start move the transmitter along the street and the red line is for the this figure and the other color, blue, yellow, and green is for this figure, for this reason have these colors, yeah? Red, blue, yellow, and green yeah. markers, yeah? Uh, of course, we compare it with 3GBP, other channels, you can see here the difference on the receipt power. The model is, is not enough to obtain the detonation. Uh, I think in this experiment here, here this figure has 1,650 links, connections. Move the transmit in this, all this position in a lot of streets for obtain all the statistics for a representative uh, system. For this reason, we uh, write the paper with the 90% of the coverage, 90% of the possibilities of the position of user. Yeah. 
but we obtain to this uh, pattern, receipt pattern. You can see, for example, this line, the, the, the black, you can see two main directions. Uh, this uh, more power, this uh, second, but you have uh, 10 dB less. And uh, you can see, I know you can see fine. The blue line is white and the red line. Maybe this be because you have two rays and the main low. When you are making the convolution between the bow, the pattern at rays is more white the the result. Yes? Huh? Here you can see because it's, uh, it's very different to the the, 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 the direction. Huh? If we quantify that gain with this uh, very simple form, we obtain the maximum power of all the rotation, in this case, in this direction, and the average power. Why the average power? Because the average power is the large scale power, and the maximum represents the small scale. Uh, for this reason, a single gain uh, say us uh, how much multiple of the channel. Yeah. If we are in the an echo chamber, we obtain the red line. If we are in uh, line of sights, we obtain the gray. And uh, with more multipath, we obtain the uh, blue line. Yeah. And this case is a simulated, simulated case for the Rayleigh distribution. Uh, you have a lot of multipath in, in all the directions. Uh, we have the two extreme cases, the rally and the free space case. This no, the red uh, line is the game that's saying the that are cheap when you buy the, the antenna. Uh, this difference is how much you lose in real conditions. Uh, uh, it's more important uh, the 10% because uh, you can be sure to assegurate the 90% of the user must have connection. For this reason, we see always the 10%, but you, you need user addictive antenna. In this condition, you need four dB more of lean budget. And uh, what we can do with this information, we can make simulation. Of course, uh, I simulation here the star, no, the, this marker, in the marker you have the base station and we you can emulate, simulate the signal to noise radio and interference too. Uh, you can obtain, of course, in, in this scenario, the signal to noise ratio of uh, users and obtain the, velocity, the rates, the channel rate distribution for this simulation. It's only an example for say how much uh, fast is your connection in this condition. But for this simulation, uh, we assume a flat frequency channel. Uh, uh, for this reason, we, it's, it's important this measurement. Uh, the second equivalent is this one is, is the same, it's very same, but only we change the frequency. Uh, 60 gigahertz, we have a direct antenna here. Uh, we have a, a omnidirectional antenna. We create, we do two uh, equipment, twins equipment, one in Chile, one in Nokia Labs. Uh, we started make, making measurement to 60 gigahertz and different scenarios. This is my PhD student, Andrea Rodriguez from Brazil. Uh, we made a lot, we do a lot of measurement uh, along the streets, canyon uh, uh, with corners too. Uh, we made a lot of measurement ah, and three scenarios. Uh, here's the base station with line of sight and 
we changed the position of the base station. And for, uh, for this reason, you have no line of sight in some cases. Uh, and we, of course, we have the corner measurement here. Uh, but we made something different in this paper. We want to, uh, we made the question uh, from where come the, all the power or the maximum power of the signal. We need, really need a beforming or with a directive antenna pointing along the street is enough. Uh -huh. uh, for that, we made, well, first we calculate where come the power. Uh, the zero grain here is along the street, the street canyon, the, here the, the red, red positions. And for, of course, the street canyon uh, measurement, the rest, all the uh, energy come from the same direction along the street. Uh, this is when you uh, have blocked the, the line of sight. You can see three different angles can, that can from the energy, maybe, maybe for, from the walls of the street. And these are for uh, around the corner measurement from all the, the places. And uh, we calculate the difference between have uh, uh, beforming and obtain the selection combiner in three directions. Along the street is alpha one, alpha two is other direction, depend on the scenario, alpha two and alpha three. It's a selection combiner, it's a more simple system and more cheap for base station. And we obtain three, three figures, three CDF. It's not so much different if you make a selection combiner in three direction or only one direction pointing along the street. And you can lose 90% only 3 dB if you have users in the same street. Uh, if you have user blockage for the building, you have up to 12 dB. Uh, and of course, we may measurement for uh, the Amsterdam gain. Uh, you can see here the same street or the, the people in the same street obtain almost the asymmetric gain obtained in an in echoic chamber. Of, of course, here you have the Raleigh distribution. Uh, I, know it's, I know it's so much information, or, uh, or it's fine. It's fine? Uh, we are doing the same, but in, in indoor condition, this is only a Information for other paper in 28 years, first. yeah. And in the condition with a corner around the corners, this you can see here here two corners, one here, the second here, and and this you have only one corner and and with different distance of, from the corner. But she's doing now is making making the doing the the measurement in 140 years first. With this equipment, uh, very easy to, to build, uh, but we use a portable spectrum analyzer. It's, it's like a cell phone, the, the size or this charger. Uh, it's very uh, portable. Uh, all the, all the uh, uh, here we have a computer, a Latte Panda computer. Um, uh, LNA for more power. Uh, all this we build in a three printer. Okay, uh, we control all this for Wi-Fi with a computer. Uh, we can we can make measurement in 140 gigahertz uh, with this system. We are making the measurements at this moment. Uh, but I think it's uh, something similar. I, can't, I won't compare with uh, the other frequency, how much more we lose or have the, the number of the relationship between attenuation and frequency. 
for the corners or a uh, corridor to in uh, for room, for example, or other typical conditions. Uh, that is a little different. Uh, we made these measurements in 2080 years. Uh, we put uh, the receiver and transmitter in the sidewalk. Uh, we make measurement only in one direction of the directive antenna fix. And we made measurement, I think, in this occasion, 7,000 samples per second. Uh, we can uh, record the, the power versus time. And I, I remember in this graphic, we are, it's a measurement for the, this bus. We can quantify the attenuation for the bus and the time uh, of the attenuation of the fading. Yeah. And this is more for a car. You can see uh, a lot of uh, uh, time and between up and down the signal. Uh, it's more difficult to attenuation. You can you must calculate the attenuation every time down the signal. You can may obtain the maximum of the three or the average of the three. Yeah. Uh, ah, you can calculate the time of the this fading. Uh, okay, we put the receiver and the camera too. Then we know which attenuation is for each vehicle or car. Uh, we are writing the paper at this moment with this measurement. We know lot. This is this about uh, asymmetric gain. We are uh, looking for uh, answer the question uh, how much you, you lose depending uh, on the wide of the antenna. For this reason, we build five antennas with different high power, but bit but bandwidth. Uh, and we are bandwidth. We of course obtain different gain. You can see here the pattern of each antenna. If we create, build uh, this system with a portable uh, analyzer that operates in 60 years. We made measurements in indoor corridors. Uh, we have uh, the result for the asymptote gain for a uh, line of sight condition and non line of sight condition. Uh, the vertical line is the asymptote gain in an echo chamber. We can see, for example, in this line, we obtain more gain than uh, asymptote gain. Uh, that's only possible if you have two or three dominant paths uh, in, uh, in, uh, in the main load of the antenna. Okay. It's not possible. For example, here you have only one. Uh, you can obtain with a rice distribution, you can uh, obtain these uh, gains. But this gain is impossible with the rice distribution. Uh, we made measurement and stadium. Uh, I work with uh, people of technological de Monterrey, Alejandro Aragón, and Melissa Diago. Uh, she made a lot of measurement in this stadium and 28, 28 and 60 years. Yeah, she used uh, grading algorithms to predict the receipt power yeah, with this measurement. Okay. And now we want to see how many sector we need for uh, for a stadium without use of informing. Always trying to do simple solution, but we need to quantify uh, how much you lose for don't use a more complex system. Uh, this other work, I hear I working with Virginia. He came here at Northeastern University three weeks ago, I think. For the summer school, 
Uh, I work with Matilde Sanchez, the tercero, uh, Carol Toledo, the uh, other university in Chile. We uh, are working in cell-free massive MIMO network. We want to include the channel models and millimeter wave uh, for obtain uh, on uh, answer the question of how many, uh, which access point will serve the user. Uh, it's a problem of optimization of the cell free. We, uh, we are trying to use deep reinforcement learning for answer this question or the optimization of the, the, the cell free Massimo system. Uh, but I think uh, in, in, uh, this month have the, the results, the first results. And that's, that's completely new. It's, uh, I'm working with Luis Almeida, the other professor in uh, Chile, in Universidad de Bello. He's starting his PhD, and he, we, we are trying to make a millimeter wave propagation over water by IoT. For this reason, we have this vehicle, underwater vehicle autonomous. Uh, the difference you have a very little high, only 70 centimeters. And this graph here are for 2.4 gigahertz. If you can change, see the breakpoint change. And it's, it's a mix between millimeter wave propagation and optimization for C, which is the optimal uh, altitude or high you need for that meter or the receiver, or if you need uh, diversity and vertical and horizontal for the antennas. Uh, uh, maybe it's an it's a open fix uh, file uh, for us, uh, or subject, yes. It's open subject for us in this moment. We are starting. Um, yes, one more time is it? They are my students. Uh, we are here with Reynaldo all the year uh, go for the university. They are my PhD student and the graduate students uh, and my lab. I don't see it so much the, the lab, but you can see the, the people, five PhD students, one, two master students, and three, four undergraduate students work in my lab. Uh, with them, we can make all these measurements always. Um, I think that's all for this moment. Thank you very much. Uh, I have more questions? I don't know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's difficult, but uh, I don't know. Really. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Any other questions? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.